with wealth and the things and the cares of this world, which have a very short shelf life. Still others, though, hear the word of Jesus, and that word is sown into what he calls good soil. And the good soil bears fruit, some people 30-fold, some people 60-fold, and some people even 100-fold. Openness, receptivity to the word of Christ reveals then a humble heart. The good soil are those who have a humble heart. If we were to do a little soil inspection today, what would we find? If we ask the question, what makes our own hearts hard? What makes them rocky? What makes our hearts thorny? Well, the answer is surely pride. It is surely self-centeredness, and it is also the desire for control. Those things always harden our hearts, help our hearts close to God, close down to others, because we're trapped in ourselves. But what else can close down our hearts? Things that we experience through our lifetime, no doubt, can close down our hearts. Things such as trauma, things such as pain or fear, things such as shame, things such as self-protection, all of those things that we experience to one extent or another throughout our lifetime, those things will close down our hearts and we will begin to hide, to hide from God, to hide from others, and to hide from even ourselves. I'm here to proclaim good news to you today because God is good. Jesus is gentle and humble in heart to receive you, even if, even if your heart has been closed down, to love you back into a relationship deeper and more satisfying than what most of us could even imagine. The good news is that the sower seeks to love you into a life-giving relationship. Well, if we did a little bit more inspection today, we could ask this question. What are we allowing to be sown into our hearts today? We live in a media culture like no uh, ever in the past of all of human history. Thousands upon thousands of images, messages, and ideologies are pumped into us on a daily basis. On a daily basis. And we have to admit, if we're honest, do these messages communicate the fruit of the Spirit or the works of the flesh? It's probably 90%, maybe 95%, the works of the flesh, which leads to death. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. That leads to life and peace, Paul says. But that's not what we experience with these thousands of images. We have to guard our hearts from the media culture that we live in. We have to sometimes get off of our social media or turn off the television and go back to Scripture, go back to hearing God's Word, go back to the Psalms, go back to prayer, which is communication and communion with the God who loves us so very much. I have a concern about this break that we have had to take from gathering together with one another. I have a concern that there might be hard hearts that there might be rocky hearts, that there might be thorny hearts that somehow will drift away or fall away from our own parish family. I'm concerned about that. 
I'm concerned that people would get bogged down with the cares of the world and somehow be unfruitful. But I'm concerned but also hopeful that for many of us, I know that we will continue in faithfulness and in trusting God and allowing God to bear fruit in us. And that is, of course, what we're called to do. But I do have a concern about what will this break from being together as a parish family, a communion, and a community, and from Holy Communion, what will that mean for us? We need to pray and ask God to strengthen us to bear fruit for God, to continue to be faithful. Well, we are responsible for humbly receiving and remaining receptive and cooperative with God's Spirit as we are being transformed into the likeness of Christ. As Michelle Lee Barnwell, the author of a great little book called Surprise by the Parable, says, perhaps presenting ourselves to God as imperfect, but willing to let Him change us as where we need to be. And so perhaps this is why the heart is so important. I think Michelle is right on target. We simply humbly have to present ourselves to God as imperfect and receive all of the gifts that God wants to give us, His love and His grace and His mercy and His power. The good news ultimately is, is that hard, rocky, thorny hearts can become good soil through humility and the grace of God. Someone that who has experienced this humility and this transformation is someone named Larry Park. He was just featured in a 48 hours that recounted the almost unbelievable uh, endeavor of the kidnapping that took place at Chowchilla, California. It happened in 1976 on July 15th where three people kidnapped a whole bus full of children, 26 in all, and had this scheme where they would bury them under the earth and hold them for ransom for $5 billion. It didn't work because they escaped, but for about 28 hours, the whole country was wondering this question. Walter Con Cronkite on the news that evening said, terrified parents, President Ford and the nation are asking the question, where are the children? Larry Park was one of those children. It completely traumatized him, although they finally escaped. But that lifetime of trauma led Larry at a young age to be so full of rage and ang anger that his parents put him in a facility. He began to use drugs. He began to use meth and alcohol as a way to try to calm down the trauma and the pain inside of him. Eventually, he became a Christian and he got sober, but he had trouble continuing in his life and he decided that what he really needed to do was to forgive his kidnappers. And so he said on television, if you haven't seen this 48 hours, it is well worth, worth, worth watching. He said on his bed one night, he simply humbly asked God to help him forgive his kidnappers. And he said that he felt the flow of God's spirit and the spirit of love and forgiveness flow through his body. His body and he was able to forgive the three kidnappers and in fact, two of them finally were paroled, and he actually met with one of those kidnappers. It's amazing what humility and simply asking God's Spirit to do can do for us. If you want to receive Jesus, God's Word, the Kingdom, humbly present yourself to God as imperfect, willing to let God change you, keeping your heart open for transformation. If you want to bear fruit for God's glory, if you want to participate in the redemption of the world, 
through Christ, humbly pray, Thy will be done, and mean it. Invite God into every aspect of your heart and mind and soul. Welcome every challenge, trial, setback, struggle, injustice, sickness, as somehow necessary for your transformation and your salvation. Now we're really getting into maturity in Christ. God will set things right in the harvest at the end of the age, and it will all be worth it. You see, God has sown us into baptism where we die with Christ and we are raised up with Him. We are sealed in holy baptism by the Holy Spirit, and now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus and who walk according to the Spirit of God. This is so hopeful for us because regardless of what we've experienced in our lives, the pain, the trauma, the shame, all of the troubles and challenges, there is new life and hope for us. In fact, Paul concludes this eighth chapter of the book of Romans where we have our passage today by saying this, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God who are called according to His purpose. If God is for us, who is against us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress our persecution, our famine, our nakedness, our peril, our sword. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is exciting, good news. Since we have this new freedom of no condemnation, this new freedom of being in Christ and in the Spirit, we can finally get out of ourselves. We can finally lose that bondage to ourselves. And the great Albert Schweitzer gives us an antidote for pride and self-centeredness when he says, open your eyes and look for some person or some work for the sake of humanity, which needs a little time, a little friendliness, a little sympathy, a little toil. See if there is not some place where you may invest yourself. And for today, we might say, find a place to sow, to sow your creativity, to sow your gifts. Find a place to toil and labor for the good of others, for the good of this world, which needs it so badly. Bear fruit for God, 30-fold, 60-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, for God's world and for God's glory. Well, Father David has been doing such fantastic writing that he has inspired me to end with a poem. Uh, the poem is actually written by the preacher, uh, so hang on to your hat. It is the poem called Prayer of receptive soil. O oh God, move the blade of your plow until it pierces the hard crust of my heart and break open the earth within me, that your life-giving word may enter in and dwell, until by your power your harvest is raised and the fruit of it glorifies you forever. 